rugby. Let's go ahead and start talking about match number one where we expect it to go in a standard fashion. Again, you cannot expect anything when it comes to this league. You cannot expect anything when it comes to these teams or these players. And one thing I absolutely, absolutely did not expect to see in a million years, Mandy, is Juicy popping off like it's 2021 again for this roster. Yeah, absolutely. Juicy at the moment is the highest rated player on this team. Now, you would never have guessed in a team of Tuhan, Killerman, Frixel and Logic no. that Juicy would be the top rated player at the moment with the 1.34, I believe it is. And yep. that does put him as well in the top five players of the region at the moment as well. This guy has just been absolutely smashing it in the first two play days. And what's even more absurd, Dev, is he is a support player yeah. and has been for God knows how long. Literally, as long as I have known that man, as long as I've seen that beard, that gorgeous face... He has been a support player, but he just continues to he just continues to thrive. Yeah, and to overanalyze that a little bit, I think that's why he's performing so well. Like the formation of this team, you look at it, this is four massive star fraggers yep. and one veteran core support player who's not known for his mechanics, but he's known for playing smart and playing his role. And I think it was you, Mandy, last week, you were saying when Juicy is on site, even if these four guys are off roaming or whatever, Juicy's on site, if a team tries to push him, he does not let them in. No. And we really saw that in the Kelton's Knights game. He went 12 kills to only six deaths. Wild. He didn't, he was never the opening death. And he even got an opening kill despite being a backline player. <laughs> he was playing with the utmost confidence and he's doing that on hard breach and hard breach denial operators. He loves it. He's yeah. back in form. He's a bit of a, a Gandalf to their fellowship, I think. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start talking about six targets where they're full of fellowship. This roster, well, you just you, you get the idea, you get the feeling that they just enjoy playing together. Uh, and Mandy, I think that it's probably encapsulated by Specker's photo. Let's move on from that one. Uh, the, the roster just hasn't performed up to what we had hoped for, but maybe it is what we kind of expected. Yeah, I mean, when you look at this team and you compare them to their opponents, I feel like they're like the polar opposite in identity, right? You look at the other guys, they've got four superstar fraggers, frontline players, really strong in entry. You look at this team, it's really hard to pick out a good frontline player. Like, yes, Tex is okay there in the stats, yep. but he's still a top-rated player. The rest of them, it's really hard to pick out someone that's going to get themselves into those engagements and create opportunities for the team. You think about Antic, they're the complete opposite. Yeah, yeah, it... It really, actually, it's a good way of prefacing it, isn't it? It, it does feel like a, a dark contrast. And again, it is important to note that really outside of Kaken, we haven't seen these players compete at a competitive level for a year. Some of them more than a year. I think uh, maybe Specker and Bailey's last game was like early, mid-2022, late-2022. Yeah. 2022. So that goes to encapsulate how long these players have not been in the game. But Dev, if you're looking for flair, we've seen Nico do a couple of things, but is is that starting to cost the team? Uh, it's it's just the Nico play style. Like, he, he looks for something clever or something funny. It's a bit of a Macy J, <laughs> to, be, to put it one way. Oh like, he gets a great idea and he wants to make it work. Yep. And, uh, like, I never want to criticize that because it, it's entertaining as hell. It is. Uh, but, yeah, it is hard to, to fit that into a team all the time. Tex, though, is a player who's really performed well. And funny, he's wearing the Fnatic jersey in this <laughs> photo right now. Just a testament to how high he has gone. Of course, even Speckle was on Fnatic at one point as well. Yep. But back home <laughs> and... <laughs> And Tex has actually been performing great. Yeah, he has. And it, it's great to see these older players coming back to the region with their experience, with their knowledge, Mandy. Do you think that it's going to hold up in a game like this? You are going up against what we are expecting to be the second team in team second seed oh, damn, in this region. It's very hard to say. I've Apparently, got I don't yeah, know. I don't know. I, to be honest, I think against this antic roster in its current form, and they look really cohesive, I think it's going to be really hard uh, to put a foot forward. Yeah. I think, you know, even you just compare these two players here, Juicy and Tex, both the IGLs um, of their respective teams, but play a very different role in the server. Juicy, he gets to sit back, uh, oversee all the chaos going on and actually direct it, whereas I think for Tex, not only is he one of the leadership figures in the team, but then he also has to be that entry that playmaker creating opportunities. It's it's kind of a lot of responsibility to take on board for just one player. And I feel like for six targets, if they actually want to make a dent in this server against Antic, they need to be doing this as a holistic team, yep. right? They can't just be relying on that one player have, having really good stats. What is really crazy to me is we've always talked about Juicy being the big brain, always being the IGL, right? Like leading from the back and, and being a solid anchor. I just very quickly looked. His headshot percentage is 68%. Wow. With What's that? 23 kills. 
That is absolutely outrageous from yeah. the old man himself. But Don just never loses it. But let's go ahead and break down the vetoes for this game. Figure out where we're going to be going. It's always important, of course, to find these map vetoes. But it still feels, Dev, that it wouldn't really matter where we head in this. It, it should mm. still be an antic favorite I, game. Yeah, but I reckon you could argue it could be even 60-40. Oh, there you go. So Chalet's banned out. Both these teams played Chalet. It's where Antic lost to Team Bliss in their previous play day. So it's curious to see them banning that out, especially when Six Targets actually lost that Whoa. same map to Panic. We end up going to border. Neither of these teams have played that this season. Uh, and even Antic, like back when the, in the qualifiers, they didn't play border either. So this should be a bit spicy. I'm trying to look back and I actually can't even see uh, Six Targets playing border back in the campaign. So... This is a really exciting, like, fresh bit of ground, fresh bit of meat for us to chew on. Well, this is actually the first... We're seeing it, obviously, for the first time in Oast League for 2024, but, Mandy, it's also not a map that has been played a whole lot throughout our region. Mm. You know, actually... Maybe a bit of a throwback, but Knights used to sit this very Thanks. regularly, yeah, right? Yeah, this, yeah. this felt like it was there. Yeah, and not I'm, wrong. Yeah, I'm talking about I'm talking about the Pittsburgh Knights. I'm not talking about the Kelton's Knights. Yeah. It was a while ago now, Mandy. But do you think maybe there's an element of juicy that's brought this to oh. the uh, antic game? Oh no! I think no. It's too, <laughs> no. God look, damn it! No, you couldn't look, just no, give yeah, me yeah, something. Look, see, see, I really want to agree with that, and I really want to believe in that because I thought the old Knights, APAC South Knights, playing this map over and over again. I thought they were fantastic on it. Yeah. But is GC going to take that same philosophy of that Knight's roster and bring it into oh Antic? God, no. Like, surely not. Not no. with these four players, right? Not with the way that the meta's, like, replayed out over these past few years. I... I want to believe that, but I think Rob, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Look, sometimes you got to know when you've made the wrong call. I'm optimistic. But regardless, we do head to Border Dev, and this is going to be a map that is going to open a lot of engagements for a lot of these teams. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of isolated duels. Are you expecting the, the might of six targets to hold up against the fraggers uh, of Antic? Good question, because Border is a very gunfight-centric map. Mm -hmm. Like, because it's so claustrophobic, if you win one gunfight, like, on CC, like, often you extend into CCTV, for example, as a defender. It yep. used to be with Azami. By the way, we might get to see, because of the Azami nerf, the meta changing a little bit around that. Uh, as soon as, like, a player in a power position dies, the attack can completely collapse. <laughs> <laughs> You've only just noticed that, haven't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Here we go. Yeah, wow. there we go. Oh, 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 oh. And I'm just going to finish my point before the yap meter Please. gets to the end. Uh, and I think that that will favor the antic play style. However, as a little contrast to that, six targets should have been able to read this completely easily because antic have just banned the maps that they always ban. And it's actually six targets that always ban border, and they're the ones that let it through. So I have a feeling six targets have been cooking. I'm not going to lie, that Yapamito seems about right. We got to Xenox there, but we were almost to go full circle and go back to Dev. It was right at the end. It was coming back to you on your spot. The two of you yap like nothing else I've ever seen before. But speaking of yapping, I, I am excited to actually see what six targets can get done in this because it's going to be an incredibly important match for them. They still are yet to find a result. They've got a point, but that's it. Going up against the second seeded team of the region. Let's go of the Yap Masters themselves to hear what they think. Yeah, that was actually really interesting to see Dev just yap on and just see the bar fill up. It's about high time we get a visual representation of James just continuing to keep the yapping going towards the end as we're like being told, throw, throw, throw. And James is like, no, I'm not done yet. Uh, we're going into a game though where I think for Antic, certainly the favorites, but for six targets, it's not exactly a position where they're like the underdogs. They're just probably not the favorites. Yeah, I think there's every world in which they could get a result across the line, but Antic, this is again a match where we're expecting them to thrive. Board is going to be a fun one. I think six targets have shown in the past six months or so that they have some pretty intriguing ideas on this particular map. Osakali come to mind, and we'll see how Antic deal with it. Yeah, it should be a fun one here on Border. Opens up, very fluid kind of map. Six targets will be on the attack first. Curious to see how they will go attacking into this particular map. Who will win in terms of the social media vote? Well, heavily in favor of Antic, 70%, which is probably about right. I mean, that's 70-30 split. You could argue maybe 60-40, but Antic certainly the favorites here. Getting off to a good start will obviously put six targets in maybe a position where they could upset the boat a little bit, but Antic are going to be very difficult to stop as we head into border for the first game tonight. A reminder, though, this is not really do or die. It is still only the third play day. This is proverbial seeding. But for six targets, it's not quite been the best to start to the stage so far. Only the one point gained. They'd like to get on the board a little bit more than just a single single point. 
logic. I only like dev. Okay. Well, we know who public enemy number one for this cast is, but that's okay. Ying off the board first. Antic will follow up. Spacca. <laughs> Thanks, Spacca. That's very, very generous of you. I appreciate that. Ying off the board first. Um, that will probably be followed up by the likes of a Dockerby, unless we see some kind of target ban. Again, is that Osa or Kali, which we're probably going to see from six targets. There is, said Kali. That is the direct counter ban on Detex. Now, the Kali for me has had relatively mixed success, so I'm a little bit surprised that it's uh, at the point where Antic feel the need to ban it out. But nonetheless, it is going to change the way in which Six Target approach the second half. Fenrir off the board as well. And as expected, it will likely be followed up, I would imagine, by a Solace. But we'll see, a couple of different options available still. Yeah, looking at some of the statistics coming into tonight, so two maps played for both teams. 33% attacking win rate for Six Targets does not fill me with a lot of confidence coming into border. Fortunately for them, they are on the defense first. Antic, though, 60% attacking win rate. They've been far more successful. Their entries, though, only 38%. Certainly on the lower side when it does come to this league, and quite a lot of teams actually above them. They're in the very much bottom half of the bracket when it does come to their entry kills. And you think about a map like Border on the attack, a team like Antic need to be far better when it does come to those entry statistics. As we head in first, Armory and Archives, no surprise here on the defense for six targets to begin this one. Which I got thrown off a little bit because the intro graphic for this had Antic defending, but while well, they are attacking. And I was going to make a point that for six targets, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about their attacking nature. I guess it's fine, you can still use that because I think for them, they're going to need defensive rounds, even on a map like Border. I'm a little worried when it does come to the lineup that they've got in terms of attacking. So if they can get some good defensive rounds, have a solid half, it will bode well for them going into the second half. And yeah, for Antic, curious to see if they can increase that entry statistic. So it is the Mute Mozzie combo then from defense. Juicy though on the Monty should help negate that. He can scout out with the shield in front, gain information for the team. Juicy a big talking point on the desk. And if you are just joining us, he has had a very successful first week here in Os. MVP for the first game, in fact, of the stage against Carlton's Knights. Played that anchor, that anchor role position, especially on defense, very, very well. So something to keep an eye out for in the second half. But on the Monty, as mentioned, he will play a pivotal role in gaining information and applying pressure. First target over towards top east. Kill man. Should be able to win this one out on the finger and does with the LMG. Bailey going for the swing early. On the defense for six targets does leave an opening and that is going to be one down. Tex. Well, this is a good position. Looking to push into top east stairs. And Tex down below with the nitrous cell. Needs to play off of a call, a good sound cue. Instead, just throws it towards the middle for some reason. I'm a little bit confused by that. It looked like he had that pointed originally at the doorway and then just randomly throws it to the top of the middle position of top east stairs. Tex gets aggressive over towards main lobby. Run in towards passport at the moment. And Tex is obviously on the prowl. Yeah, just applying a little bit of uh, contact pressure. Elsewhere, Killman falls, looks to pick himself back up, but Nico taps away at the head, finds the kill, confirms it. Oh, I was about to say Nico taken very, very low, and that is tr true. His teammate falls alongside, though, in Specker. So a four versus three. And the attack with the advantage. Juicy will look to get office control and we'll see how Antic pivot from this point onwards. Smoke over towards Fountain. 90 seconds remaining. Tex is going to slip into it here on the defense for six targets. Nico low. Does still have a nitro cell. As the smoke will dissipate, Tex can't find anything initially. In towards archives at the moment for Nico. Big important play in this round considering still that Montang on the board. The nitro cell can help alleviate that pressure. Coming in from Antic. It just goes prone now. Anticipating the push. The push is very much coming in. Tex in a position that will commonly get checked, swung. But as he's cake and that stands up, big kill onto Logic. And suddenly it's a three versus three. Juicy Diffuser in hand, looking to make the cross, looking to plant on the bricks as to not expose himself to vertical denial from down below. He'll turn around, go for the plant, and we'll see if Antic can cover. Wait, gets off it. Not sure what the sound cue was, but he does get a headshot kill onto Tex. I mean, he was getting shot at from that fountain position, but was that pressure enough to get off the plant? Either way, back on it. Frixel then gets the kill onto Kaken. 
That Nitro Cell was used somewhere by Nico, but no impact. Nico now, the last one remaining, and Montank standing in front of this doorway. Essentially just says he cannot win this game. Guard break looking to see if he can catch a bit of a foot, but Frick's all over towards 90, gets the kill. And in the end, Antic will get the opening round. Yeah, pretty clean there from Antic, not looking to rush that execute. And even when Juicy attempted the first plant, I think from our view, it probably looked like it would have been rather successful. But nonetheless, just cautious, takes his time, falls off. They finally picked Tex apart over towards Fountain. He had that key cross, and once he was dislodged in the grave, it made it far easier. Once the plant goes down, of course, with shield extended, retaking in towards archives. Impossible for Nico, who was very, very low on HP as well. So yeah, good attack from Antic to kick things off. Defenders, protect your bombs from being defused by attackers. Attackers have located a bomb. So into the second round. Armory and archives taken by Antic. No second go round for six targets instead, opting to go down below first floor. And I think a big reason why he lost a big portion of that round. Early swing from Bailey. You need to take those contests, maybe not, not that early on. You got Montaigne to deal with and you had Tex down below. Could have probably played a bit more of a safer game. Antic, I think, are going to be the kind of team on this map, especially on border, that will be more than happy to take these contact fights, be aggressive, swing, play off of the Montaigne if they bring it. This time they don't, instead opting for the Ossot. Talent shields available for two hunt, and no Montang employed. Castle an intriguing pick as well in this round, looking to soak up utility and cut down a few lines of sight, especially on the horizontal extension here from defense. Emphasis then on the likes of Logic, the Ash Breach charges, nades as well may also be used to clear those barricades. Nico plays contact security and will run through the lion scan to retreat. That means that he'll be pinging his location to the attack who know that it has now been fortified. No, forfeited, not fortified. <laughs> yeah, a lot of impacts available as well in the six targets. Composition that they've brought this round, already used a couple, three to be exact, but still have five remaining. Towards security. With this talent shield by two hunt. Juicy gets caught. Bailey with the opening kill. Not exactly sure how Juicy goes down this early into the round. With hard breaching gone off the table. Could make life a little bit more annoying for Antic. By no means though is this round over. Kaken has got an exit strategy. If he needs to, the hatch to his right is available. Can Kaken win this duel? Well, he spots one. The shots don't land, but he is able to fall off. Elsewhere, Tex, good for his one. And so far, a success for the defense. Tex spots another, lands more shots. Logic low. And this keeper barrier will pose problems for the attack who are looking to crawl their way back into the round. Good swing, though. Confident from Frixel. Yeah, but very low now. Same with Logic. Good little response. Tex, great angle. He stares, had the bullet hole that he was playing off of. Got good info into Logic. Couldn't get the kill, but he got him very low. In towards waiting now. And Killer just goes for this lurk. No one's really watching. To make his way in unannounced. 45 seconds left. Very small vault. He will check this, but winning the battle is going to be Nico up close with the MP5. And that should be the round, you would imagine. It kind of felt like that that little lurk from Killerman needed to be the success. It was a, a big part of their win condition. Now on a two on four with the two are quite low. Frixel lurk over towards main and he does get one. Bailey shot in the back. Time, a big factor. Only 20 seconds left and bot metal is where they go and trying to eventually make their way towards site. Still needing to clear a lot of angles and spec with an easy one. Slightly off angle. Frixel just crawling around and then Nico gets the final kill towards main lobby. Antic will make it too. Sorry, six targets get there one. It's been a it's been a long week. <laughs> it was only week one. We've got three more to go, Jakey. It's been a long week for me. <laughs> ah, all good. I mean, it was a good defense overall, really, from six targets. 
Good initial bit of information gathered by Nico. Falls off, baits in that push security. Bailey responds through Virtues. He falls. Then we saw the second main fight of the round over towards Office and Kaken again. Successful job from him. Good pressure top east. Eventually cleared by Frixel, but at that point damage already done. As we mentioned, all of those remaining players then quite low on HP, having to play contact into sight, lack of information. Six targets holding good positions, didn't give away anything for free. Yep. And rewarded handsomely there in round two. Yeah, better second round from six targets. A little bit more defensive in nature, rather than looking to be overly aggressive, deny entry positions and swinging early. Loved the hold from Tex over towards East Stairs, playing off the bullet holes. Yeah, it just kind of forced yeah, Antic to have to really clear out these positions. Nice little drone, just spots one. Archive side, Nico with the, the Banshee. Seeing a lot more Malusi so far at this stage than we originally would have anticipated. And the Bandit as well, employed by Kaken. Attackers have located a bomb. So a big posture up above then through to security here from six targets. Trying to draw Antic into that push. They may look to pinch over towards Archives, but it's Tex to initiate the first fight. Wins it out onto Logic. He's going 0 and 3 to kick off this game and Tex, oh my word! Tuhan falls as well. And this round all but over in the first 40 seconds. Yeah, and, and isn't it now easy to sit there and say, well, well played from Tex, but I'm kind of criticizing what Bailey did in the opening round. And that's essentially the same thing. Bailey did the same thing. A little push in from Frix was clean. Lobby control, Specker caught completely off guard. He was looking up. Frix understanding that in a three versus five here, and a lot of pressure towards security, maybe trying to hit main site. Go fast, go quick. Could be vulnerable, could be open, especially if they're on that second floor. Default shot out. And with that, a decent amount of first floor control right now for Antic. Six and one from Frixel too. But yeah, Tex, very fortunate with that, that swing. It was successful. And then uh, an interesting little shoulder peek over towards break. He's able to get a headshot. Really clean start to the round for him. But with 90 seconds left, it, it is only a three versus four. Good first floor control, but clearly Antic are, are sensing that there's still trouble up above yeah. that they need to clear. Yeah, they, they know that side at the moment is all but clear. There is only the one defender running at the moment, so it's a good read. But this vertical Ooh. pressure from the defense needs to be dealt with, needs to be tamed, at least disrupted. Killman to push forward into the arms of Bailey close Bailey. by. Oh, does he get checked? Close angle. Oh, oh the timing of it. Oh! Does stand back up. What? Trade comes through immediately from Juicy. And then Frixel elsewhere. Over towards 90 now has got, got, got good top metal control. This is two on two, under a minute remaining, suddenly very winnable. Oh, security! Prone, Tex oh, no. loses that one! As great as he was to start the round, falls apart up above, the sweep from Antic has been clean! Down to Kaken as the solo on site, hearing the commotion up above. And he looks a little worried as to where he wants to play in his position. Oh, he's on drone as well. Uh, you can see it underneath the, the chairs. That will prompt the, jump, uh, the, prompt the drop, and Antic can go for the plant. Frixel covers. And Kaken, there's really not a whole lot he can do. Juicy's going to stick it, barbed wire in the way. Kaken, yeah, the, no, no swift response. Goes up above. And even from these vert angles, can't find anything initially. Shots, though, does give him a bit of an inkling as to where one may be. But now no longer peeking, no longer giving Kaken any time. Needs to drop hatch and start sweeping across towards supply and customs. Otherwise, this round is over. And as soon as he drops, watching his Frixel. Well, Frixel kind of started it all with the first floor clear. Tex with the opening two kills towards security, and then Frixel's just like, bam, straight through main lobby, gets a couple of kills, opens up site, and is able to bring the round back for Antic. I cursed her. I, 40 seconds in, 3v5, I called the round over. What happened top floor there from six targets? Two players get caught prone. That's the very beginning of the round. So fantastic work from Tex. He aggresses outside, catches Logic off guard. Two harm with an ill-advised, very late trade, jiggles into the second. So that's just really clean work from Tex. But then unfortunately, him and Bailey just not working cohesively top floor late round. We saw the player there try to have a bit of an impact, and Bailey ultimately did get the pick, then traded out, and Tex awkwardly got caught as well. Just a little bit of a strange round to, to let that slip. It is the tertiary side though, so perhaps a little bit more forgivable, but 
I'm sure six targets will probably agree that they gifted that round a little bit to their opposition. Eight and one now for Frixel. That'd be a, a standout opening couple of rounds. I mean, eight kills from three rounds. Super impactful, and it's not just essentially padding the stats either. I mean, he is the reason why they were able to get back into that round and then eventually finished it off as well. So back up we go again for six targets. They were unsuccessful though on Armory and Archives the initial time that they defended here. In fairness though, it was a, a Bailey early swing death that kind of opened up top east stairs and Antic were then able to overwhelm that second floor. Logic struggling to get into this game. 0-3. We saw him get swung only by Tex in that last round. But Logic is also the kind of player that can, well, he can honestly start 0-7 and then still end up like 10-9. and 9. So it's largely irrelevant. Attackers have dropped the bomber. Attackers recovered the bomb. Attackers have located and by attackers. Playing that buck roll then. Here for round number four. Perhaps looking for an avenue to vert down below. Maybe catch a roam as well, or a rotation. Oh. Well, he's, he's made the cross. So Texas is holding left side now. Mm. Uh, it, it's a very small thing, but yeah, if they swing at the same time, Logic should win. Oh. Noise made. Logic doesn't have any fair to play off, though, I don't think. Can't really afford to take that risk, especially first contact. Well, especially what Juicy's now going for the plant. I mean, this is interesting. Oh, Nico. oh no. And it does take out Nico. Who is up as well, trying to maybe see if he can peek over. Second, Nitro Salt does get rid of the shield, but the plane is already down, and that's the main job done. Hive Launcher being utilized by Frixel. Two Hunt taking some damage. Logic now can play from below for Antic. Really has a, an even more main win condition in Workshop. They need to clear him out before they can even get to that plant. So he's like a secondary objective that needs to be dealt with. But he pushes up main. This is interesting. Maybe to catch them off guard, and yeah, and it does work. Shoots Bailey in the back of the head. Trade from Specker, but yeah, all the numbers with Antic Plus. Main position, outside. Good plant. Nitrous off from Nico off the mark. Sorry, it was from, from Bailey, I believe, actually. I think Nico was all the way up. He was on the, the receiving the... end. <laughs> he was on the receiving end. Yeah, a bit of a, a bit awry there defensively for six targets, but a really nice push in from Antic playing off the Osler Talon Shield. 3-1 lead. Yeah, I mean, good opportunistic play. Utilize the Osa properly. Logic offered that good threat down below and then potential to go up main, cut off that cross once the plant was down. But questions certainly posed as to what the hell happened with plant denial. The lack thereof, the initial nitro not landing in the correct position, the second nitro ultimately getting the kill but too late, plant already down. Six targets just struggling a little bit to deal with that aggression in the previous round. Just started to really get some control in this match, Antic. In fairness to six targets, though, if that blunder of a Nitro Cell doesn't happen and it actually does connect with Juicy, that could have been the round as well. If you're going for that kind of play, push in, play, play behind the Talon Shield, we see others also employ the Montang to do something similar. A Nitro Cell or two to stop that very much can win you the round alone for the defense. They had logic as well as really the third wheel down below to make sure it was even more unlikely that they were going to be able to go for any kind of counter defuse. So into the fifth round now. Six targets haven't really been able to win all that comfortably on these primary sites. Hentic looking to take an established lead going into the second half. Last two rounds have really encapsulated Antic going for opportunistic plays and exploiting pockets of weakness, but also six targets not playing up to the standard that they would expect of themselves and providing those opportunities. So if six targets can tighten up, I think there's still every world in which we could actually even draw out the half, to be completely frank. I really don't think that at their best they've looked that poor, to be honest. It's about finding that consistency. Frixel to push through the danger man. Up to 10 Who's kills, will the trade land from the Azami, Kaken also slain! 11 for Frixel. Yeah, I mean that's just poor defensive, if you're going to hold second floor, someone's going to be watching archives or some kind of flank watch, or flank utility. It's a free push in for Frixel, and it's not the first time in this match that he's been able to do something like that. 
where he could just push straight through, find a couple of kills. What a standout individual performance. 11 and 1. Reloading. Over 90 seconds left at a 5 on 3 for Antic. Strangely enough, haven't really been in this kind of position too often where they've got all five players up and six targets are down to two or three. And scrambling on the defense. We've already seen six targets throw around from a, th a five on three advantage. We'll see if Antic may do the same, but cool Carbon collected. Really utilizing this top floor control towards Fountain and Archives. Opening up these floorboards, putting pressure on those down below. Specker trying to find an angle. The only thing found though is his head Courtesy of Logic's bullet. And this round is over. About to be 4-1. Tex and Bailey is the final two standing to see if they can change the tide. There's one. And that's the planter denied as well. Big double kill from Tex. And maybe a third could be on. Indeed it is. Ooh. And just like that, the round flips on its head because of Tex. And Bailey doubles down and gets rid of the player top waiting. What a calamity from up 5-3. Suddenly, Killer Man is the only man remaining. With 30 seconds left, he has to stick the plant. The goo mine, though. Oh, and Tex will finish it off. Experience shining through on that bald head of his. <laughs> I don't mind that one for you, Jake. I don't mind that clutch either. Wow. There's been some big moments in this game. Some Where did that come from? I think you've just encapsulated that sentence, where did that come from, applies to so many rounds in this match already, and we're not even at the halfway point. That's what I'm saying. Six targets, when the players are fired up, they're landing shots, they're looking confident, looking good. They, they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe in this matchup. They win the next round, 3-3 half. It actually looks very positive for them. But, yeah, what a rampage in that last round. Staring down the barrel of essentially 4-1 as well, which I deserve 4-1 at that point. And I did make that little quip at 5-3 up in the round. We had already seen six targets from that position, throw it away. Were Antti going to do the same thing? They looked fine, normal. So there's that replay of uh, round number four, the round prior where the uh, failed Nitro cost six targets the round. Here's round number five, last round gone. That was Tex firing off there. So there's been a couple of crazy rounds in this match. Arguably, six targets could be in a world in which they were just ahead, but not meant to be, and they'll have to grind away defensively here for round six. The clutch factor always has to be taken into account. Six targets are more than capable of that. You think about the experience that just oozes on this roster. Antic will be kicking themselves, but it's not as if six targets themselves had already been in that position earlier on and threw away a 5-on-3 advantage, so it's all... Fair. Logic trying to get aggressive. Cake and just struggling to get involved. And with that kill, advantage for Antic once again down here into the final round of the half. Susu will open up main entrance and uh, never mind, that's passport. Yeah, just tricking the wall because it's electrified. Either way, Tex in towards security and one to keep an eye on. Nico will challenge that here. Good top four control for six targets, but Antic so far in this game have been more than fine to just kind of hit a little bit more direct, taking a lot more first floor control and then pushing up rather than trying to play off of these balconies too aggressively. Bailey then once again over towards break, keep it barriers to assist, and Tex is playing the back line in security. We've seen this config before here from six Keeper targets. Nico also over towards beepers as well, top metal position. So they have that triangle defensive structure up above once more. Last time Antic were able to break this down in a three versus five. Mm. So for six targets, this doesn't feel like a particularly comfortable position for them at the moment, but if they're able to refine this top floor hold, it might be a little bit more positive. Antic is actually going to rotate now, pivot over towards office, try to exploit this pocket of space. Maybe try and put Nico on an island here. He's the next to probably play contact here for six targets. They still got a minute, don't have to rush this. Logic Bomb being utilized by Killer Man. They've got the numbers. It's all about just taking your time here. Don't have to worry that much about the 50 seconds left. Find these kills, force them. You can always hit sight a little bit late, a little Ooh. bit later. Nico finds the head of Killer Man. And that suddenly could change the tide again. 
One for one trades keeps things all squared up, but three Attackers versus three. The With the final 30 seconds now counting down suddenly for Antic, they might just turn their attention towards sight. Tension opened up earlier, and an entry point now for Juicy, and straight in towards sight. Now, main entrance getting opened up by Frixel. He's got the kit, and inside though to the left is Nico. They know he's here. They saw him on a drone. There you go. Does get the kill. Two on two. Spec up. And suddenly with Tex. Once again, Tex with the good position up above, and he does get the kill into Frixel. That was the kit man. And Specker also doubles down. From 3-1 down to 3-3, six targets have brought it back here on border. Just for a moment looked a little bit as if Antic were getting full control of this match. Up 3-1. They were up 5-3 then into that, that fifth round. And since that moment, Six targets have found a way to flick the switch and get their way into this game, despite even this opening kill from Logic. It didn't really matter that much. When it did come time for the actual contact bites to ring out around the map, six targets were just a bit better. Yeah, I think in terms of actual fundamental siege and reacting to what the other team was presenting, round six was probably what was the best display, in my opinion. Um, First pick, goes without saying, uh, a little bit unfortunate there for six, six targets. Kaken on the bandit trying to uh, trick wall, got caught off guard. But then we saw Nico up above, the impact that he had, then droned out, they hunted him down. That was a, as part of the pivot to not play into Tex on the vert, which ultimately did cost them. I think they were obviously trying to find an avenue and a way to get the plant down without worrying about that, but didn't work out for Antic. Still a good attempt. 3-3 three, three scoreline now. So it makes things very, very intriguing. Dynamic will no doubt change here in the second half. And we'll see if Antic, especially with that strong fragging power, can play contact on map entry and make it really challenging here for six targets. One thing to note as well, especially on the side of Antic, Killman's going one and six. And this bloke can pop off at the drop of a dime. So if he fires up here defensively, that's another layer of difficulty that 6T have to deal with. Yeah, it's interesting as well with the flip of the half. So far through the first two games of this play days, Antic have been better on their attacks than they have been on their defense, which is quite surprising in this current meta. Very small sample size, but still something to take note of, especially on border. You're defending on border, and you've been struggling with your defense a little bit. The six targets have been the opposite and probably been the more normalized statistic. Not as good on attack, but typically fine on defense. So they... Both teams kind of switching to respective halves where they haven't actually been that well in this current stage. Again, two days. It's only two games. Oh. The auto breacher. Oh, against the keeper. Yeah, I mean, Ooh. Tuhan's going to be a bit more aware of what could potentially happen there. Off the boogie auto breacher. Through the doorway and towards top east. He's just standing and not able to react to it at all. Not playing around what that could possibly do to take down the keeper barrier. He looked a little stunned. I mean, it was the perfect counter. With the presence of the Magnets and Logic still up above, it was a phenomenal play there from the attack. Logic still up above though, close to that east position, has been pinged oh out, God, is taken Nico. down. Two huge kills from Nico to unlock top east. Yeah, I mean, this is a bit of a tilting round for Antic. Probably for the individuals, especially for Tuhan, who would like that moment back again. Frixel started 11-1. Now he's 12-4, so he's kind of cooled off a bit, but as expected, he can't do it all. But hey, if there's ever a player you want in a two versus four, Juicy's up there in the uh, conversations. That's just the Gemini. Courtesy of Killer Man, and he does oh. find the headshot on to Tex. Well, he said he can frag. Two in the round, and suddenly now has three overall. A Nitrosol, but it's a creeping, crawling Specker who somehow survives that. Killer Man as well. And now Juicy looking to play off of that contact. But he will back out of Fountain. Has been droned. And the Don himself in a one versus three. Trying to ward off the six targets. Men pushing into his sight. Yeah, 6T just waiting for a rotation. I believe it's Archive's window. Pushing out to come through. Specker for the plan. And there is the window. Bailey holds it. 6T with a really good attacking start. Yeah, really strong round from six targets. It all started off with Nico, the Boogie Auto Breach, the top east. Tuhan just sitting there behind the keeper barrier, didn't anticipate that it was gonna get broken down. And he looked a little bit stunned. He looked concussed. Look, he's just standing there. That was great. His gun wasn't <laughs> even look, like pointing. He was just hip fire position. Lovely swing as well to clear out top waiting. And that's then probably the round. I mean, a, a tiny little moment there from Killerman. 
Yeah, a pixel. Wow. And then, honestly, should have got the kill on to Specker, who was just kind of crab crawling his way through. So three, four, and six targets will take the lead. Three rounds in a row. When they looked a little bit beaten here on board at the beginning of the first half, they've responded perfectly. And now, three rounds away from finding their first map of this stage against an Antic team that many of us thought would win this series, win this map, I should say. It is only a best of one. And find themselves in a bit of a hole. On the defensive border, it's not like other maps. It's not like an Oregon or a clubhouse. Certainly a fluid map where the attacking team can find good attacking rounds. And we've seen that already there from six targets. Ten seconds to insertion. Camera activated. Five seconds to insertion. Attackers must locate and so round number eight then. For what is poised to be quite the half. Castle in play, so I presume that's used for the extension. We're going to see those castle barricades in play up above. Valkyrie as well. So information is going to be critical here for the defense. No IQ in response from six targets. But there is the Dockerby. Those logic bombs can disrupt the ability to watch those cameras at any point in which they choose. We'll head things over towards the Belk to kick things off. Bailey 2 drone 4, but it's Kaken in the midst of that, to find the first pick for what has been a very rough game and a very rough half for Tuhan. They double down again on the attack, but it's Frixel perhaps to save the day this time around. He is able to respond with one, and that's his 13th in the game so far. Yeah, and looking at the numbers, shouldn't be too surprised. I mean, Antic are a team that could do certainly a lot better on their attacks than their defense. Good response from Logic. Boy, they needed that. Still lots of time in this round, three on three, and this is probably a bit more helpful for Antic. I think in a 5v5 scenario, it's a lot easier to second guess yourself, and six targets have got the numbers to be able to spread this defense thin. Now, it's all kind of down to your ones. Can you can you hit your shot? Can you get your one when it does come to your way? Still defending up above and towards Officer's Frixel. On the photocopier, and just will hold this angle. And Valkam still up. You can see Tuhan sitting them where they're positioned. I don't entirely know, but information being fed. There's Logic Peppers up above. Frixel to security. retake. Oh, and that freebie. is a free kill and diffuser on the deck in break. The one in security did get shot out, by the way. Yeah, not sure exactly where all of the other Valkams are located. Juicy 2 gets one onto Specker. And Antic have been able to offset this momentum from six targets, but it's still. Tex, the man with the experience, he's already clutched up once. Can he do it again? Doesn't hit the initial shot. Had he done so, it would have been a one versus one. And he almost gets another chance. How many chances will you get, Tex? Oh, a third. Why don't you? In the one versus one now against Logic. The young versus the old. And suddenly now the pressure on the man with the tattoo, the man with the ego to clutch up against the man with the bald head and all of the experience, and he doesn't quite see because Logic's not giving him an inch. Waits for the noise, waits for the sound cue, and now, heading into red time, Logic will start moving from Workshop. Text to plant behind the bomb chassis. A late movement from Logic and through Lobby he goes, but Tex should get off of this now to have a chance. Even if a minor one to clutch us up for six targets. Sitting still, he makes his move. And he makes his shots count! He's done it again! Wow. <laughs> I almost can't believe it. Wow, 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 wow. Huge from Tex. What a clutch. Did a really good job of putting every single defender on an island. Logic trying to play passive, holding the objective. Gets caught out. Text with one fake and then sticks it the second time and Logic did not trust it. It was another good start from 6T. First couple of picks. The retake though from Antic was great. Again, facilitated largely by Frixel. But Tex, oh. R4C ACOG, this is his season to shine. You know what's interesting about it though? The target ban, the Kali ban against Tex and the man. I mean, honestly, I think it was for the best. <laughs> I, I still am not you convinced by the Kali. You want to take my Kali, that's fine. <laughs> 12 and 5 for Tex in response to the Carly ban. It was all a ruse. It was all a ruse.
just get really good at Kali, so they ban it, and then it's just like, ah, uh, I don't care. Yep. Free flex. So 5-3, six targets close to finding their first win of the stage. Boy, it would be a big one, too. For two reasons. One, you're taking down Antic, who I think everyone has regarded as the second best team right now. In a very short period of time, still, and lots still to play out, but they, they hold that mantle. And two, just being able to find that first win. Oh, that must be pressure relieved if they can do it. Antic was so close in a 1v1 to tie in the scoreboard up 4-4. And now, suddenly, not that far away, six targets looking for match point. A pretty even spread of performances across the board. You could argue Kaken's been a little quiet. He certainly was on the defense. Mm. Now, of course, playing hard bridge on the offense. And he can frag. He can hit some good shots. But right now, Tex is the man leading the way for six targets. I mean, this is the breed of six targets that I really wanted to see week one. It didn't quite come into fruition, but this has been really good performance from them so far. And Nico as well has been very handy on entry. I have reason to believe as well that he's actually having like mouse issues at the moment. That's why like, every time I spectate him, he's like Nico. spinning around like a windmill. <laughs> yeah, I saw that as well so when he was running down the corridor and he was... Look, no excuses. You can still go eight and six in a pro game if your mouse is shit. Becca makes entry into offices. Your window easily dealt with. Six targets look so confident and comfortable, and Killer Man has just struggled to deal with the presence of six targets once they get into these contact positions. Tex will be outside archives. Spec is in offices. And it just feels like the defense is getting strangulated on site. No room to move, to breathe. To make a play is the Gemini gets shot. I know exactly where Two Heart is playing from. He's full white behind the shield. And Tax will go down to Juicy. Specker gets the full information. Deals with that shield. Nicely done though from Two Heart to find the head of Kaken. Making the cross and suddenly with 60 seconds left, the round is very winnable for Antic. Two Han's done a great job dealing with that pressure, holding strong. But that shield gone and Specker senses the moment to swing. Juicy back a sight. And over towards top medal is Frexel. Specker has got three! Talk about the old heads! He might be the oldest of them all! Besides potentially the Don! In a one on three! Yes, Specker makes it a quad kill! And he's smiling with those big chompers! Six targets! Match, point, and tactical timeout for Antic! Four. I mean, six targets are simply. Out mechanicing, uh, out mechanicing, out mechanicing, <laughs> out shooting their opponents. I mean, they are really abusing the ACOG meta here on attack to create favorable fights. They're winning them out, and then, as you sort of alluded to, strangulating the defense. We're seeing these players like Tuhan having to now watch so many different angles, and your timing just has to be off by a fraction of a second, you know, in Siege in general, but especially on a map like Border, and you are just bang dead from an angle that you don't even know exists. Um, Really clean work from six targets. It feels like they're in a bit of a flow state at the moment. And attacking in that mindset on border is just the best feeling ever. It feels like they've locked into like 2019, 2020. Let's just wind that clock back a little bit. Just just a bit. That's a, a long years. time ago. Actually, that's a, that's a big wind sure. back. But they look switched on. And mentally as well for Antic, a team that besides Juicy, the other four are these young gunners going up against the old prime boys, the old boys who have been around the block, and it must not feel good when you're getting beaten by some older heads. But Specker with a quad, and he was the man that got the entry into officers, cleared out eventually Tuhan, who I thought did a decent enough job. Brought it back to a 3-3, got a nice kill. On to Kaken. Three. Three match points now for six targets, and this would seriously ignite their season. Their stage, I'm not saying Bliss levels, I'm not saying Manchester levels, but if we want to put Antic on the pedestal as second best team, and six targets have knocked them off, boy, it just opens everything up from second and below. 
Now, I mentioned at the conclusion of the last round that Six Targets is doing a really good job at exploiting the ACOG meta, and I'm not just pulling that out of nowhere. Look at the headshot percentage of these players at the moment. It's insane. Tex, the top frag, at 75% headshot ratio. Nico, 71%. Right up there with what you would expect from some of the sharper shooters going around. So, again, creating these favorable fights, landing shots, making few mistakes, and Antic just aren't matching that at the moment. It's also at this moment, too, where if you're Antic, it might just get overzealous. Little mistakes like that, even the goo mine not being thrown properly. So they start to maybe look to deny entry positions. Swing these angles. Could this be a bit more of a fast-paced attack as well from six targets? When you've got that ram, you could open doors quickly. Make a bit of noise in doing so. Oh, it's direct. And it is going to be direct. Tex is just going to plant. They're just going to walk into sight. Juicy, can you deny? Well, we'll see if he can. He is the closest man in being able to do so. And there is cover. Not only the double kill, plus the plant, plus the fact that they walked in the front door. What is Antic doing? Frixel, he can't do much. Logic does get one. I'm not sure why Bailey was going in to War Sandwich. 15 and 6 now for Frixel, but not a lot of time. On the counter defuse position, Tex is still available inside of the server, and with that is probably hope that they will be more than fine. Frixel in towards Vent. One outside the window. Not yourself. That could be good. No. Doesn't find the kill. One outside main entrance, and it's taken with a double. He comes up big in the clutches of round, and Logic can't do anything more than that. Straight through the front door. For six targets, they will find their first win of this stage and in doing so, take down Antic, the second best team, or at least they were. I mean, what a half from six targets. That was Juicy's out of there. wild. Man's gone. Antic looked. Look at Logic. They just looked so oh. uncomfortable defensively. I mean, what was that last round? Not a single attempt at vertical deniability, seeing hatch drops, runouts, it would just look absolutely chaotic. And not the good kind. Border is a map where chaos can thrive if done right. I wouldn't even say six targets Bro. played in that uh, you know, particular mentality. They were quite methodical and just picking apart their opponents. You look at this six targets roster, firstly, they're a team that either has no hair or too much hair. But they've got so much experience, though. And I think once they can really put that all together inside of the server, that match highlights how much of a threat they can be. When they're in that flow state, like you said, they're a match for anyone. Now, maybe when I say anyone, Bliss might not be one asterisk. of those. They might be the asterisks. But against everyone else, certainly you would argue six targets could be anyone, asterisks, besides Bliss. Yeah, I totally agree, Jakey. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to be the first match of the day done. Six targets already setting off this Oceania League. Third play day off with an absolute banger as they take down Antic Esports in a very climactic fashion. The older heads will prevail. I don't know who could have possibly predicted that. Oh, oh <laughs> wait a go. second. Oh, wait a second. It's just your resident damn host who can do it. So is that the first one you've got right That's, so far this season? That right? is the, yeah, nearly, nearly. Yeah, look, uh, I will give you some credit, man. Big balls to pick six targets over Antic. Six targets hadn't even won a game yet. They even lost to Panic, yep. which is probably like the lowest rated team coming into this season. Antic, as everybody has been saying, are the obvious second place behind Bliss. Yep. Uh, and yet... Wow, 7-3. That is not just a, a, a win for six targets. That's no. a dominant one, especially with the huge clutch that we saw uh, from Tex in round eight, that uh, one versus three with the Ash. Antic clearly just got really cocky there. And yeah. six targets never said die. They were always fighting for it. It's like it's quite shocking to see how this has turned so quickly. You know, the first five rounds, Brixel's on 12 kills. Juicy's had a good pop-off moment in the first round. Then things started to kind of spiral a little bit. Six targets just started hitting their shots before we even hit the attack. And then, Mandy, when we hit the attack, they just turned into another gear. They turned into another beast. 
Oh, I complete, they proved me completely wrong. At the start of the day, I was saying that their attacks weren't going to be super cohesive because they didn't have the front line and that kind of thing. But I think on a map like Border and the way that they played it, just with a lot of patience, it's just well calculated, well thought out ideas on the attack, especially bringing stuff in like your ram, utilizing flashbangs really well to initiate themselves in that type of thing. They just had the right ideas going into the attack and they completely dismantled the answer. And Dev, this is something that we talked about from the very start of the stage and we really preface it on the, on the first play day this team could either come in and completely disrupt everything that we have tried to build in O's for the last year or they could kind of fizzle in and, and just fit in they're not looking to do that first play day second play day they had their warning shots and now they come in and beat the second seeded team in our eyes it's insane yeah it's a huge ups for them their opening game they lost 7-4 to Odium and Odium with two rookies on their roster as yep. well. Six targets had a lot of expectations after their performance in the campaign. Funnily enough, uh, Antic had a very pit pitiful performance in the campaign as Osiris. <laughs> Funny. Uh, and now in the matchup head-to-head, -head, it's a dominant scoreline in favor of six targets who are without a doubt the underdogs in this matchup. Yep. And the way they did it as well, as you were saying, I think they really know how to play a modern border really well. A lot of people last year especially relied on attacking with those vertical frag grenades. Yep. You don't have that to flush out key positions anymore. So we saw creativity. You already mentioned the RAM. I love the way we're seeing RAM used to clear his army barricades. Yeah. We're seeing it used for more than just vert. We've seen so many different operators. We've seen flashes used so well, yeah. as you said. And while we did see six targets really focusing in on problem solving and clearing positions, they're also not afraid to just say, oh, I know where this guy is. I think I'm just going to swing him. And they win there once. Mm. Well, uh, you're talking about winning ones. I'm talking about welcoming a special one. Mandy, would you like to do the honours? So, you know, there's big budgets in NA. There's big budgets in EU. In OS, we get what is like to be called the crumbs. But we have invented our own big screen TV. And while a big screen TV needs a big bloody head to fill it, let's welcome in the man, the myth, the specker. Oh well, my well, days, well. my friend! How's what that? in the shit has just happened there? Oh, good to know. Swearing's okay to a threshold, but mate, bloody just a ripper game. To be honest, um, just came out. All the lads were super excited to be there. Had a lot of fun. We Simple could, bloody ass, really. Honestly, I think I think there's so many questions that we have that we need to get mm. answered. But yeah, we've got the a very, few to the very, decipher. The, the very first one that we need to uh, the first one we need to ask is coming mm. into this game against Antic. What were yeah. you expecting this like result to be? Because we all expected quite a big win from Antic. Yeah. Um, I, I won't lie. I just, I, I usually have little gut feelings with things. And today I had a gut feeling of this is just going to be a fun game. We're going to win. We're just going to do what we have to do. And I honestly think, as you touched on in the first two matches that we played, it wasn't really angsty. It was kind of resettling and we didn't really mm. feel as good. But from the antic point of view, I can only really wonder kind of where their mental's at with with how they feel as a team. Do they have something to prove? Are they a new kind of lineup? Have you had people that have kind of been close to the top, got there, but didn't really like achieve too much really outside of, you know, I mean, given the fact that Bliss is really the only super competitive international team at the moment, um, they never really got to that kind of threshold. So I'm wondering where they're kind of at with that, if they had pressure, but to be honest with you, it was a pretty bloody easy match and we just had a really fun time and vibes are just up, yeah. just chatting shit and just bringing as much hate as we needed to kind of bring and kept uh, the soul and life about us, which is always nice. Dev? Yeah, amazing. Uh, look, Specker, coming to that game, I didn't really know what to expect out of Border. It's one of your most banned maps as a team yep. uh, and the game's changed so much since you guys were last really swinging at the at the big yeah. leagues uh, and yet you came in and we saw so many different things. We saw Nico doing stuff with the Ram. We saw you guys going nuts. Mm -hmm. The Kali band comes out and Tex is like, don't worry, mm -hmm. I'll play Ash and Frag out. Break down that match for me. Like, what were you expecting out of Border itself? How do you think the game's actually changed and what were you guys doing to get a one-up over Antic? Well, I don't necessarily think they knew that we we're going to go play Border. I don't think that they thought that, that was going to be a map pick for us. And they might have come in a bit too holding high of head, thinking that they're going to confidently come on through. Oh, they're just going to do basic default things like this and all that. But really, I think we we're just focusing kind of on a lot of intel gathering, just working with each other, again, communicating what we're actually visually seeing and translating that to the rest of the 
the team and I think we did a pretty good um, job at that. And yeah, just been practicing border for a little bit. It's just a pretty fun map. And I think we just beat them out in the vetoes. I think we've improved on some other maps. Of course, I've been in a bit of a hiatus for two months. So I've just recently come back in and while Sethi was filling for me. So there's been a bit of a readjustment from that, which certainly was some teething issues. Um, but I do feel like we're just going to kind of, um, that was, I guess, an, a catalyst that had to happen. And now that it's starting to steamroll through, I think we'll just consistently be uh, improving for the rest of the season then focusing kind of on those playoffs. But yeah, nothing too really special, just playing with each other, just a bunch of good mates, having a good bloody time, as it should be. <laughs> keeping it civil, keeping it honest, mate, making sure, you know, you get a bit of sunshine in the morning. Civil. I'll yeah, admit, I'll tough. admit, I did go to the beach this morning. I've got a little bit of a glow. As you can see, I'm trying to get rid of the gamer tan. Two months of no sun in the snow. It'll do feral things to a man. So this morning, and this is some tips for everybody out there, beach, great for you. Water at the beach, terrific. Black coffee, perhaps on a fast. Why not? And let's just top it off with a nice little jog, little dip, maybe some push-ups. You're sorted, mate. Can't be better than that. You were talking about the communication flow in the team, how you guys have been trying to um, show, well, visually what's going on. Once that information yeah. comes through, who's then the person consolidating all that intel and then calling the shots? Um, I'd say it's predominantly Tex at the moment. He's definitely a strong IGL voice. I've definitely got more positional kind of call outs as far as I think the fundamentals of achieving a round kind of win. I'm not so good at the, let's say, meta side of the game because, of course, I've been a bit out of it for a while. Um, but I still do have that knowledge on, on what is core to kind of win the round. So everyone, I think this team performs well when we're all firing off in regard to we're all vocal, we're communicating, we're translating, as I said, that that information so that somebody can visualize what we kind of need to do. So that final round per se, we're just like, well, look, these guys are playing relatively similar to us, it felt, and we felt that that was a pretty weak site for them. Uh, we saw, I think I saw two in long haul. And then I thought, I think it was one up in office, I heard. So like, you know, five people versus two, they're pretty bloody good odds, aren't they? You just jump in and just have a bloody good time. But you're about the site, mate. Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that you're back. Oh, I'm so fucking elated. I'm glad to be back as well. I'm up for, also, thank you for upping the budget. This is crazy. Up yeah, here. I'll tell you I what the we, Look, <laughs> we've been working night and day, mate. I think we've all picked up second and third jobs just to make oh, sure that we can get the tools. you. Uh, mate, Serious you time. know, you know, sure. you know. They call me the handyman, but I've never touched a tool in my life. So oh, it's... mate. Uh, but if one came your way, oh, I reckon you'd know your way. I, <laughs> I would know exactly what to do with that thing. You know, oh, knock, knock, touch sure. wood. That, what are you? What are you going for here? Are you drumming? Are you getting the hammer, mate? I'm hammers. I'm I'm hammering nails left, oh, right, and center. Okay. Is that is that what's on the uh, agenda for the rest of your stage? Is this is this going to be the uh, the the stage of knocking nails completely what into the in? wood? The little the little nail in the coffin. Is that what we're expecting? Mate, I've done a few years of construction in my time. Just kind of wish Ethan was in the league as well. He was another tradie. We've lost Jaden as well, a concreter. But to be honest, with the tradie references aside, um, yeah, just looking for a slow burner here. We're looking to evolve, have fun over this stage, and uh, I think start to formulate a real, real strong roster. Because of course, I kind of, um, you know, well, it was a bit of a hiccup with my departure. But here we are, having fun. You know, living life, simple as mate. Yeah, it's it, it is as simple as that, isn't it? I just, yep. mate, it's so good to have you again. Anything oh, you'd like to say? To here, anything you'd like to say before we let you go and turn you back around to the darkness? Oh, yeah. How's that? Can we have a little like vignette fade away, or is that a bit too much? Oh, no, no, we, we can... more high tech than that, mate. We're just gonna push you out of here. <laughs> oh, really? You're just gonna roll me out? We're gonna yeah, roll you yeah. the <laughs> But before you do, do you have anything you want to say? Um, yeah, look, honestly, just shout outs to those that support us and still watch us and enjoy watching us. It means a lot um just huge shout outs to the lads that i play with really fun we did really well today super stoked um andrew i uh, love you mate you're doing well god's work shout out to all the production all the talent you guys are killing it uh you know it's a, it's a huge operation so really thankful to be back up on the main channel and um yeah hopefully getting some more exposure for australia but yeah just just Appreciate you guys lots. If I'm in bloody Melbourne, let's catch a beverage. Oh, oh yes, yeah. please. Just let me know. Just let me know, mate. mate I just just I'm a cheeky, for a flight just count. a cheeky cold one. That's all we need. But uh, Specker, look, mate. I don't think the international audience are ready for you or your performance. Oh, we will please. see you very shortly, Manny. Roll the shit out of here. See ya, Specker. Bye, boys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All righty. Well, that concludes that interview, and I hope we never have to do that ever again. What are you saying? That was the best interview I've ever been That's, a part of. I, I Can we have, just get him on the desk every day? I like, have a true admiration for that 
man and that I'm just going to call him a man lovely man yeah. but what he said is very interesting you know we we kind of we did allude to it a little bit on day one but nowhere near enough I don't think we gave it the respect that it was due Specker has actually been in Japan for two months that's not doxing but he's been in Japan for two months prior Must be nice to this starting Where was he, literally, Specker? he literally came back the week before the OS League started and like even then they were still competitive Dev I mean does this go to yeah. speak volumes as to what to expect yeah, uh, it took them a little bit of time to warm up, but yeah. they're here, and if they can continue the form of a game like that, who knows, maybe they could even have a solid fight against Bliss. Uh, and as he was saying, don't overstress these BO1s. We yeah. saw the like the faces of Antic as they lost that game. Juicy was out of that call uh, as quick as he joined it. And uh, you don't need to kick yourself. You lose a game here or there, it doesn't matter. You're in top six, and it's just win three BO3s, and you go to the major, right? Or... Yes, three BO threes. That's all it is. It yes, three, three BO. Three well, BO3s. technically, technically, if you finish top two, it's only then two it's BO3s. only two BO threes. But yeah. yeah, what's one extra BO three? Like, start in sixth place. You know, have a shit round robin stage. I'm sure Specker won't mind. He's like, oh, it just means I get to play a couple of more BO threes. Whatever, just take it easy. Roll up on game day. You know, work on that tan from the beach. By the way. Haven't I been telling you to come to the beach with me? I don't know what you're talking Every about. Every week, Dev I'm has not me left his you. home. He has not touched Man, grass he's been to the beach in with about me twice six once. months. Yes. Dev, you yes. know what? How about we do this? We'll we'll go outside. We'll get some fresh air. We'll touch some grass. Please. And when we come back, game two of the night.